while you're working at Pinterest for that nine year period, there was a two year duration where you went and did a master's at Stanford, the rival school across the bay, my alma mater. What was your thinking there? And would you recommend that to other people who, who want to follow a similar career path as you? It helped me tremendously. When I graduated, this was like back in 2013, deep learning wasn't a thing. Like I was at Berkeley when it just formed its like undergrad machine learning course. So a lot of the foundations for deep learning I didn't have. My mental model was like, in 2014, I started playing with CAFE. Uh, this was like the deep learning framework back then. It worked, it was amazing. I didn't have the foundations. And I saw that like, hey, there's this like Stanford part-time master's program with a lot of really interesting classes around deep learning. Let's go there and like really get my foundation solid. So I spent three years doing this part-time master's, mm. taking like one or two courses at a time. It was a lot of grind, but it was definitely worth it. Like uh, I had the pleasure of taking like Andrej Kaparthi's uh, class. Like it was like CS uh, 231N and it was extremely useful for yeah. what I was planning to do. It was with purpose, it, like, it was with intention. And mm. I think it really helped me in my career. What's interesting about what you just said is that you know, my typical advice is that a lot of the value of school is actually the network and the people you talk to, but it, I didn't really hear that from you. It sounds like a lot of it was really the content. Like you just gained a lot from the actual academic part of that master's. Is that right? Or did you actually feel like you got a lot of benefit from the colleagues that you met? Yeah. So for a part-time master, you basically only go into the class when you have to take an exam. You don't really meet people. Looking back, I think that was a mistake on my part. There were definitely a lot of really talented people that I should have met, should have formed a connection back then. It really was this like forcing function as well for me to like study, to sort of absorb information in like a very structured manner. And that was at least my main goal. And it was what I took out of it. Pinterest, even when you did the masters, I imagine it was still fairly immature. And it certainly wasn't like Google or Facebook scale. For a company which is still growing and relatively immature, it's less academic and much more about like, you know, just do the engineering work, data munging, pipelining, all that stuff. Did, how much applicability did you find from this really deep academic work that you were doing at Stanford and your day job at Pinterest? Yeah, so it's actually super interesting. So Pinterest definitely was still very early. I'll talk about the systems part first. So one of the successes I've actually felt like I've had throughout my entire career is that I had the opportunity back in Pinterest to really build complicated distributed systems, complicated products all the way from scratch. The first project I had at Pinterest, it took me like two years to do, really was building that like visual search uh, system. Uh, we called it Pinterest Lens. You can take a picture, uh, take your phone out, take a picture of anything, learn information about it, buy the products that you took the picture with. This product required sort of like an understanding of how to like index billions of like pins. So pins were like images. Yep. Uh, you can think of pins as like an image. So we had to build like a C++ distributed nearest neighbor uh, or like vector search system as they call it nowadays from scratch, be able to handle the sharding, the replication, the availability, uh, building like different parts of that stack, including like the collator, et cetera. But basically that like formed my infra foundation where I'd spent a lot of time doing like, everything needed for that. Mm. Uh, and then I spent the next half of the time working on the product like really figuring out how to get the product usable. Technically, it was really cool. What can we do to make it useful for users? That foundational knowledge is, I think, like pretty hard for most engineers to have. Like that experience is pretty hard for most people to have. And then going back to Stanford, I was lucky in that like everything I learned was extremely applicable to, to my job. And you can sort of see it in modern day where like AI is like everywhere. Some of the last projects I did as a distinguished engineer was really centered around knowing the algorithms, knowing deep learning really well, uh, knowing like where to go next, bring that knowledge uh, to the company. Stanford was, yeah, it was extremely, extremely valuable. One trend I've noticed throughout my career at Pinterest is that there is definitely a difference between ML engineers that, or ML scientists, engineers that sort of like had their education in the deep learning era. Mm -hmm. Uh, versus folks that like predated the deep learning era, uh, especially in the first few years, like 2014, 2015, uh, where the difference is like when you tackle a problem, do you like tackle it with like XG boost or logistic regression, or do you like try deep learning uh, early on? And uh, I think that mindset shift was an advantage, and that advantage just like compounded over time.